else's problem. I, I want them to know that there is someone who cares about their community. It's just her way of doing a little trash talking. Are you making a difference? I think so. The streets look better. The, the community look a little better. You know, we could all use more people like that. And that was News Center 7's James Brown reporting. If you know someone who's making a difference, James wants to hear from you. You can message him on Facebook or email him at james.brown at whiotv.com. I love this story. It's 519, 42 degrees. Dry today, wet tomorrow. That sums it up. Let's get all the details, though, the specifics from Storm Center 7 meteorologist Kirsty Santini. Good morning. Yes, uh, we have officially begun fall here. We want those dry weekends, so hopefully you can get and enjoy fall activities. If you're going to be spending time outside today, it looks like a beautiful forecast. Even tomorrow, the chance for showers we have is not going to be uh, as impactful as it could be. I'll show you future cast in just a few minutes. And then Sunday's another dry afternoon. Temperatures will be right around 70 Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so that's going to feel pretty comfortable to us. Now, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources puts out their fall color forecast. They have foresters, which observe the trees and are able to make some predictions for when we see peak fall color. And this year, they are predicting the northern part of the state will see peak color change October 17th through the 24th, and the central part of Ohio around October 24th, and then the uh, southern portion of the state here that last week of October is when the colors will really peak. So this is pretty close to normal. Most years we run uh, with that middle to end of October for us here in the Miami Valley, seeing the best fall color change. And the Ohio Department of Natural Resources also finally begun putting out uh, their fall color reports. So again, they have observers at all of our state parks and nature preserves across the state. And each week they will report in how much color change is already beginning. Most of our uh, state parks here are not seeing the change quite yet. There's a lot of green. Buck Creek, though, in uh, Springfield and Clark County, they are just starting to see some change. And in your suburban areas and urban areas, is, you're probably noticing the leaves are beginning to change already as well. That's typically because those trees are planted in soil that's, you know, not the supernatural soil like what you would have in the forests and nature preserves. So in a neighborhood, the soil is a little drier. The nutrients are not the same as they would be out in a forest. So sometimes that can allow the fall colors to begin in your neighborhood a lot sooner than what they would out in our nature preserves and state parks. Now this morning, you may notice some frost on a few of the leaves this morning as we've got temperatures in the 30s, so cold enough that you have light frost development, especially on a clear uh, night with calm winds. Visibility, we've had a little fog in Sydney off and on. Visibility's been shifting. It's about a mile now near Sydney. And temperatures through the afternoon, once the sun is up, it is quickly going to warm us. So we should be able to hit 71 in Dayton, 70 degrees in Eaton today. Touchdown 7, another dry week for football games across the Miami Valley. We'll be in the low 60s and with homecoming for some schools as well tonight. Beautiful forecast for them. Now we do see rain showers from the remnants of Ian on Saturday. Mainly in the eastern Miami Valley during the day, we'll have a couple light showers that push through. So it's not going to be a totally rainy day tomorrow. And really, you'll just notice gusty winds on Sunday up to about 30 miles per hour. But Sunday is a dry day as well. Let's check in now with Sergeant Mark. He's keeping an eye on your morning commute for this Friday. Good morning, Sarge. Good morning to you, Kirsty. Well, we're starting out with good driving conditions, although about uh, 2 o'clock, a little after 2 o'clock this morning, a vehicle caught on fire. It was a semi hauling cars on westbound 70. It uh, actually caught on fire right around the area of Route 49 in Clayton. And since that time, uh, we've had either the highway being blocked or completely or lanes restricted. I think they moved the camera. That, I don't have control over that camera, so they spun it around, so I can't really see the uh, scene. Now, I do know they are still there. The right lanes are blocked. Left lane is open. It's not a major backup right now, but I would suggest if you want to avoid any chance of getting stuck in traffic, you're right now it's moving okay, but you can leave the house and they can move things around there, and that's an active scene, so it changes from time to time. But uh, your best bet would be to come over to the Brookville area, Arlington Road, before you try to get on the westbound 70. Now, if you miss that ramp, you're going to have to come all the way over to Lewisburg in Preble County at State Route 503 before you get on the westbound 70. So, got a couple of alternate routes there for you. I'm Sergeant Mark Allen, WHIO Team Traffic. Thank you for the detours. 523 now, it's 42 degrees. 
Rabies detected in part of the Miami Valley. The animal infected with the virus and what happened when a man was bitten twice. I remember when the lady asked me was I sitting down that it, it was not a good thing. That mother spoke exclusively with News Center 7 after her daughter was killed by a hit and run driver. What this mother wants to happen to the person responsible. Thousands of student loan borrowers no longer qualify for debt forgiveness, who is now not eligible to get part of their loans taken care of. Now the gas prices.